Jesus name amen right welcome somebody by you who you suspect will be a father or is a father a father can only be a man so congratulate every man around you this morning give them a handshake say something good to them this morning amen amen don't mind We forgive those people, the women who are now trying to become fathers. <laughs> I don't mind the ones that circumstances has thrust into that position. But it's sad that in some cultures, women are now being forced into that position. You know, the Church of England the other day was debating whether God is male or female. There's an, there's an ongoing debate that God is gender neutral. And that's supposed to be a church. And now we're not debating whether we should say our Father or we should just say our God. We can tell where this world is going to. But this morning, my job is to challenge every father that will, re will reach to be a blessing to the people around them. Isaac stands out when it comes to being a blessing to the next generation. Because it was his idea. His sons didn't have to go to him to ask. It was his bother, it was his worry to transmit to his sons the blessings of God upon his life. He didn't, he didn't need to write a will. He passed on the blessing that he had on his life. Now, verse 37 of Genesis 27. Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master, and I've declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give you, my son? Verse 37 of Genesis 27. The confidence that the man of God exercises here is it's, um, clear that he is acting for God. You know the whole story. That the man, you know, wants to bless Esau. Esau was his first son. Esau was the hunter. Esau prepared that meat that he had a liking for. So, as a father, he had prepared to bless his son. But, but just like any other family, that there was an issue in that family. The father and the mother were on different sides. The father liked Esau, obviously because of the meat that Esau was making for him. The mother liked Jacob because they say that Jacob liked cooking, he knew how to make food. So, even though the mother knew who was going to get the blessing, I guess they probably didn't discuss it. So they carried that, whatever you want, however you want to describe it, into this next generation. So Isaac talked to Esau while the mother talked to Jacob. Somehow she succeeded with Jacob to con Isaac. 
Even when Isaac found out, he confirmed the blessing. And he now says to Esau, I have made Jacob your master. And I like to speak over you this morning also as your father. I make you a master where you are. I said, I make you a master where you have been planted. I declare that everybody around you will become your servant. I guarantee you abundance of grain and wine. He didn't give him a grain of corn. He announced it to him the way I have announced to you this morning. I want to believe that your life will turn around. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if I do that for you as your father, I want you to go back and then act like this towards your own children. That is what God expects us to do. What gave him the confidence? What gave him the effrontery? Listen, there are things that you cannot explain to others. You can only experience them. Isaac received the blessing. He carried the blessing. So when Isaac is talking to you about the blessing, he knows what he's talking about. And he was ready to pass it on to the next generation. Now, if you go to the next scripture that you have in your bulletin, Genesis 14, from verse 17, but Joseph was, of, was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted, up, lifted it up to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. No, my father, he said, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused. I know, my son, I know, he replied, Manasseh will, become, will also become a great people. But his younger brother will become even greater. I announce to you this morning, you will become a great people. You will become greater than anybody that has come ahead of you. Now, you have these two men. Just as Isaac blessed Jacob. I figured that Jacob could, he could account, he could testify the change in his life when the blessing came upon him. So also, will you begin to walk in generational blessings as you live here this morning? So Joseph stood up for his son Manasseh. And the boy's grandfather said, no, 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 don't worry about him. He too will be great. Yeah, but this younger boy is going to be greater than him. People will be upset by the dealings of God in your life. Joseph was upset when he saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head. So Joseph lifted it to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. This, the, the plan of God over your life is not going to be truncated. What God has destined for you will come to pass. Not even your father can stop it. God will orchestrate things and it will fall into the right places. Those boys came there as Manasseh and Ephraim. Oh. No, no, they came as Ephraim and Manasseh. But their grandfather reversed the order. This morning, 
I reverse every negative speaking over your life. And I declare over you that things will work in your hands. Whatever has worked against you will be righted this week. In the name of Jesus. The man began to tell him and said, no, 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 he too will be great. Just as I can tell you who among us will be great sometimes. So also do I expect you as a father to be able to look at your children and say this one is going to excel. Hmm, this one, his brothers will take care of him. God has placed you there to give you blessings to pass on to your children. I like, I like this. That, that he said to them, the people of Israel will use your names when they give a blessing. They will say, may God make you as prosperous as Ephraim and Manasseh. May the blessings of God upon you become obvious. Are you following me? I say, may it become obvious. You will get the kind of jobs that people will begin to use your job as a criteria for other people. You will have results that people will begin to use at to measure and wish that things happen in their lives that way. Israel will begin to use you as a blessing to the people of God. This is before these boys had jobs. They just happened to have spiritual fathers who took responsibility for the future of these children. And I like the certainty within which these three men blessed their children. They were very certain they knew that these blessings were going to work out. They were convinced. And so they declared it. So they prophesied over their children. For you to prophesy, you really must be able to have, hear from God. You must also have the faith to prophesy. Because you prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Are you following me? I wore this my jersey this morning because my son said we should wear our uniform. And for me, it's important. I not only his father, I'm also his brother. So when we want to act like boys, we also wear our uniform. And then we try many things. So he, when he gets it organized, I need to leave some impression on his mind. So we need to be deliberate on how we also raise our boys. There are many children in this congregation to whom I am father. But I remember when I started fathering him, I think at about 16, he's 30 now. 30, I'm now about 34. You can imagine that at that tender, as a teenager, he was already fathering his younger brother. So I will father him, then he will give me report for his brother. Now it's important that the children may not be your own. But listen, you don't know who is going to be your support tomorrow. Some people in this town, their house help is stronger than the children of that family. People we knew when we were growing up. You don't know the people that God is bringing around you. They may be the help that God is setting up for you tomorrow. Can you help me preach to your neighbor? Say, help someone's son around you. 
If you look at the story of Mary and Joseph, Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 says, After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, Stay there until I tell you to return. Because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary's mother. And they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. May God speak to you in the night. May you have the courage to wake up and take that step of faith. You can raise your children prophetically. If you are just a nominal church person, can you imagine a man who relocated from one dream his wife wasn't full of argument. Of course, his wife, who first began to receive the angels, and you see, once Joseph began to receive from God, God really spoke to Mary. So Joseph relocated to Egypt. Joseph so that he could fulfill that prophecy in the life of Jesus. I pray for you this morning that your family will be raised prophetically. Every move you make will be to fulfill prophecy. Will be to fulfill the will of God in the life of your family. The second thing I'd like to share with you again or emphasize this morning is that in that verse 17, Joseph fights for his first son. Isaac attempted to fight for Esau. What are you doing for your own sons? What effort are you making? Isaac met with his sons. Hey, hey, oh boy, go and bring me that meat too. <laughs> because... Maybe the way my hand is shaking, I don't know, I may soon die. He wanted to give that blessing to his first son. That was the natural thing to do. But his wife was more spiritual. Knew from God. And then Isaac went, Esau went to prepare. Jacob went to prepare. But Jacob came back first. He had his fears, he suspected, he tried to, and then but he still blessed the boy. So also did Joseph try. Now Joseph He said, No, 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 no. Lay your right hand on my first son. And his own father said, Don't go there. I tried it myself. Somehow, I think I understand God now better. And so you have three generations of the men in that line in the same place. In fact, what impresses me is that the third generation has two men. Every family here will have great influence. Where there was only one man this morning, I had another man. Your authority is going to be multiplied. Amen. That means that one of you is going to lose your names. So instead of Joseph, you now have Ephraim and Manasseh. May God multiply your family. May God increase your family. Now, you know that before... They was Joseph. Joseph. Joseph was the one that brought the entire tribe from Canaan to Egypt. Egypt. By the resources of Egypt. I pray that that middle person in your family will link you up with the powers that be. Will become a world class person in your family. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And after that person, that family will have a large number of men 
who will stand out. Someone asked me, say, hey, why only men everywhere I preach this week? I was, I was, I was, I was, I said, because I'm, I'm devoting the whole of this period to raising fathers. And no man here will fail to be a father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So you see, for Joseph, the Joseph that went to Egypt, his own father loved him so much and made him a coat of many colors. That's how Isaac loved this That's how Isaac loved, I mean, um, Joseph loved his, his first son. How do you treat your children? How do they remember you? Do they know you for only negative talk and shout? You are more interested in their results than in their lives. Oh, the thing you wanted to become that you have not been able to become, you want, you want them to become that? The other day I told you that my girl said she wants to go to Oxford. And I said to her, no, no, we are not the Oxford group. You know how much school fees is in Oxford? I have another crazy boy I'm fathering who wants to go there to King's College. School fees, 30 million naira one semester. That is like a lifetime savings for one semester. What of the second semester? And I said, well, I need school. You go to is good enough for me. Two, three months ago, her auntie was at Cambridge. So I said, I called her, I said, Joy, 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 you are, your auntie is at Cambridge. So that is enough for every member of this family. Your, your mother's father was at Cambridge himself, so she represented all of us at that Cambridge. And she said to me, she said, what if I become first? Will you still let me go to Oxford? I say, my dear, your life is not about competition with anybody. Whether you are first or you are second, this family, you are our star. We are not using you to measure, so don't compete with people. I want you to be the child that God wants you to be. So don't think whether you are first or you are third. No, that doesn't make sense to us. That is why during holiday, we are on holiday. Occasionally, they do music school. Or they say that, no, no, holiday is holiday. Our time together as a family is more, than, more important than anything anybody teaches. So we bond. We run around, we go places. Don't use your child to put your child under pressure because you fail. I always wanted to be a lawyer. And I have many enemies. So I want you to go to school and become a lawyer. So that you can jail my enemies. May God forgive you. You will do adult school and go and read law by yourself. I guess the problem of Nigeria is from this evening school lawyers. Let me concentrate on my message. Before I will offend some of you. Oh, we must develop spiritual muscles to take charge of our children's future, man. I like some, you know, that Psalm 112. I like to read it every time I dedicate a baby. Psalm, Psalm it says, the seed forever. of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. So you just even don't have to become a prophet. Just following the right path. I like God. It says he, he, this blessing goes to a thousand generations. Do you know we have more on generational blessings than on generational causes? Generational causes go to only four generations. Of them who hate the Lord. I don't know why my colleagues like to talk more about causes than blessings. And you know, 
Sin did not come through my family. Sin came through Adam. I am identified with Christ. Christ is identified in Abraham. Christ. I get to Abraham. I'm in the But some of you are looking for where you can get punishment from God. I am blessed beyond the course. Too blessed to be cursed. And my children are blessed. Are you following me? My son will always like to ask me, how much do I have in my account? I said, I don't know. I said, I don't know. <laughs> Yesterday, he borrowed me money. He has cash. So they said they were going to vote, visit this uh, friend of mine's son in the school. And I asked them to all go. I'm tired. I can't go. So they, then they said they need to buy drinks, the, the drinks they have. So I gave them the money I have. They said it will not be enough. He said that he has 1,000 naira. I said, add it. When I will pay back now, when you pay him back, since his money is always new money, if you give him old money, he will frown his face. He will remind you that, ah, but that is it's new money I gave you now. Now that they have arrested the Mefele, hoping it is true. <laughs> I like Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. The Mefele may be in one guest house and they are telling us they have arrested him. <laughs> They lie so much in this country that you don't even know who to believe again. <laughs> Maybe a Mephele is in his house, or who knows? <laughs> Very soon, it's me that they say they will suspend. <laughs> we know who should be arrested, <laughs> who should be suspended. <laughs> I know you know the man. <laughs> I will not mention his name. <laughs> But they will suspend him and bring him down. I'd like to bless you more this morning. Wherever you are, I'd like you to open your mouth and begin to prophesy over yourself. If you are a father, begin to call your children by name. Declare over that your daughter, you shall be great. In your time, you will be like a pillar in the king's palace. Declare over your son. No, no, no. Faith will rise over you. The hand of God upon you will be evident. The favor of heaven will be manifested in your life. You are too blessed to be cursed. What I have not been able to do for you, my God will do for you. That land I have not been able to give you. That house I am not able to give you. That car I am not able to give for you. I by faith receive it for you. I bless you with a fitting joy. I bring the blessings of your grandfathers that they were not able to walk into. The blessings of my father that they were not able to enter. I bring it upon you. I prophesy over child, over every nephew, over every niece. Oh God, everyone under my influence, I speak over you this morning. I ask that grace from heaven will answer for you wherever you are. I open to you the doors of nation. You will live anywhere you want to in this world. No country will refuse you visa. Wherever you want to go, that's where you will go. God will take you to the world of the time. Prophesy over your children. Bless them with the blessings of heaven above. Bless them with the blessings of the earth beneath. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I have made you a master over everyone around you. And all the people around you will serve you. I guarantee you food in the name of Jesus. I declare that because of the blessings of God over you, food will no longer be a blessed problem. You have more food that you will ever need. When Simon needed one meal, God gave him two boats full of fishes. One Whatever need exists in your life this morning, I give you two boats. 
I give you two boats. I guarantee you two boats. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I stand in room as your father this morning. And I open to you the doors of nations. When you retire, you will go around the world with ease and plenty. No doors will be locked to you. You will go wherever you want to go. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Help me congratulate your neighbor. Give him a high, warm handshake. Congratulations.